A home, they say, is where the heart is, but in the case of Apichai Ongwisit, it was where the horrors resided. In the heart of Thailand, a young Apichai was born into a family that was far from ordinary. His early years were not filled with the warmth and love that children deserve. Instead, his existence was dictated by the chilling echoes of his father's deeds, a man whose hands were stained with the blood of his own wife. The Onguisit household was not one of joy and laughter. It was a place where happiness died and fear took root. Apichai's father was a man of violent temperament, his wrath often turning towards his family. The walls of their home bore silent witness to the escalating violence, growing thicker with each passing day as the family's unity began to crumble. This disintegration reached its terrifying peak when Apichai's father committed an act so heinous it sent shockwaves through their community. The man who was supposed to protect his family became its destroyer. He murdered his own wife, Apichai's mother, leaving a young Apichai to navigate the world without the guiding hand of a mother's love. This chilling revelation was a pivotal moment in Apichai's life. It was a traumatic event that would cast a long, ominous shadow over his future. His father's actions not only stole away his mother, but also planted a seed of violence and darkness within him. The pain and turmoil of these early years were a cruel tutor, shaping the course of Apichai's life. Growing up in such a volatile environment, Apichai was molded by the violence that surrounded him. The echoes of his father's brutal crime reverberated through his life, shaping him into a man who mirrored his father's monstrous nature. As Apichai grew older, the shadow of his father's deeds loomed large over his life, a horrifying legacy he would soon inherit. He was not just the son of a murderer, he was a child of violence, a product of his father's terrifying legacy. And as he stepped into adulthood, he carried with him the unsettling echoes of his past, setting the stage for his own descent into darkness. The apple, as it turned out, didn't fall far from the tree in Apichai's case. A dark cloud of inherited evil seemed to settle over him as he grew up under the shadow of his father's violent legacy. This was a legacy that Apichai would, unfortunately, not only carry forward but also amplify in a chilling echo of his father's past. As a young man, Apichai was no stranger to the underbelly of society. His first known transgression into the world of crime, however, was not just a simple misdemeanor. It was a gruesome act that bore a chilling resemblance to his father's first crime. The eerie similarity between father and son's actions was a clear indication of the sinister path Apichai had begun to tread. This was not a case of a troubled youth lashing out or a desperate man driven to the edge. No, this was a calculated act of terror that seemed to have been waiting in the wings. A manifestation of the dark inheritance that had been passed down from father to son. The details of the crime are horrific to recount. But it is important to understand the extent of Apichai's descent into darkness. He didn't merely mimic his father's actions. He took a step further into the abyss. His crime was not driven by need or desperation, but by something far more sinister. It was as if he was trying to outdo his father, to surpass the notoriety of the original crime. To make his mark, so to speak, in the most horrific way possible, the echoes of his father's past were clear in Apichai's actions, but his own unique brand of terror was beginning to emerge, casting a long and dark shadow over his future. A shadow that would grow darker and more terrifying with each passing day, the descent into darkness was not just a plunge, it was a deliberate dive, a chilling testament to the fact that Apichai was not just repeating history but darkening it with his own sinister touch. The whispers about the Onguisit residence being a house of horrors were no longer just rumors. This was the place where the unthinkable happened, where the line between life and death blurred in the most horrifying way. This was Apichai Onguisit's home, the chilling setting of his heinous acts. The house was a labyrinth of dread, every corner hiding its own chilling secret. It was within these walls that Apichai's dark nature truly revealed itself. His terrifying deeds, as shocking as they were, were a reflection of the environment he had cultivated. The first gruesome discovery was a metal casket, not just any casket, but a makeshift one. It was here that the lifeless body of his girlfriend, Warren Thornchayache, was found. She had been reported missing for months, and her final resting place was this house of horrors. The casket was submerged underwater, a chilling detail that painted a macabre picture of her final moments. But the horror didn't stop there. The police, in their investigation, unearthed something even more disturbing. 
The grounds of the house, once thought to be just a garden, were transformed into a grim graveyard. Multiple bodies were found buried on the property, victims of Apache's terrifying reign. Each body told a horrifying tale of torment and fear. The victims were not just killed, they were subjected to unthinkable atrocities before their death. This was not a home, it was a torturous trap where life was snuffed out in the most horrifying way possible. The house itself was a silent accomplice to Apache's horrendous acts. Its walls witnessed the screams of the victims, its floors absorbed the echoes of their despair. Every room was a testament to the nightmare that unfolded within its confines. The house was not just a structure of bricks and cement. It was a living, breathing entity that bore the scars of Apache's monstrous deeds. Every inch of the house was tainted with fear. The air was heavy with the scent of dread. It was a place where happiness was alien and despair was a constant companion. The house was a chilling reminder of human cruelty, a monument to the darkness that lurks within the human soul. The Anguasit residence was more than just a house of horrors. It was a symbol of the terrifying legacy of a man who let his darkness consume him. It was a testament to the horrifying depths a human could descend to. It was a chilling reminder that sometimes monsters are not under the bed or in the closet. They are walking among us, hiding behind the facade of normalcy. Apichai's reign of terror had turned his home into a macabre monument of his crimes. The house stood as a grim testament to the horrifying reality of his deeds, a constant reminder of the darkness that once lived within its walls. The whispers were no longer just rumors. The house of horrors was a dreadful reality. The legacy of the Anguisset family was now etched in blood and fear. This chilling statement brings us to the end of Apichai Anguisset's reign of terror, but not to the end of its impact. The echo of his heinous acts continues to reverberate through the community, leaving a palpable sense of dread lingering in the air. Apichai's life was a haunting mirror of his father's dark past. It seems that the sins of the father truly were visited upon the son as Apichai not only inherited his father's home, but also his penchant for violence and disregard for human life. This macabre reflection of familial crimes is a chilling reminder of the cyclical nature of violence and the devastating impact it can have on subsequent generations. The aftermath of Apichai's crimes left the community in a state of shock and disbelief. The once vibrant neighborhood was now shrouded in an eerie silence its streets echoing with whispers of the horrors that had unfolded within the walls of the Anguisit home. A once familiar face had become the stuff of nightmares, a grim specter haunting the collective memory of the community. The Anguisit family name, once associated with wealth and influence, was now synonymous with fear and loathing. The legacy of the family was irrevocably tarnished, forever linked to the gruesome crimes committed by its scions. The name Onguisit became a chilling reminder of the horrors that can lurk behind even the most respectable of facades. The enduring stain on the Onguisit family name is a testament to the magnitude of Apichai's crimes. It speaks volumes about the depth of the terror he inflicted, the lives he shattered, and the community he left in ruins. It is a grim testament to the power of fear and the lasting impact of violence. In the end, Apichai Onguisit didn't just inherit his father's house, he inherited his legacy of horror. This chilling legacy serves as a reminder, a warning, and a call to action. It reminds us of the importance of breaking the cycle of violence, of standing against the horrors that can lurk in the shadows of our society, and of ensuring that such gruesome legacies are not allowed to endure. Justice, though delayed, is never denied. This ancient adage rings true in the chilling tale of Apichai Anguisit. Born into a family marred by violence, Apichai was a living testament to how darkness can be inherited, passed down from one generation to another. His life was a tragic symphony of cruelty, echoing his father's gruesome legacy and transforming his home into a house of horrors. After a painstaking investigation, justice finally caught up with Apichai. He was held accountable for his heinous crimes, a verdict that brought an end to his reign of terror. It was a grim reminder that the echoes of violence can reverberate through time, manifesting in the most horrifying ways. But it also served as a stark reminder of our duty to break the cycle, to ensure that such atrocities are not repeated. Apichai Anguizit's story is a chilling reminder that sometimes the worst monsters are those who walk among us.